What is up guys and gals, my name is Detovai2, and these are my top 5 games for the month of March of the year 2016. So kicking off this list number 5 is a game that I enjoyed a lot at first because the fighting in it was so good, but then it kind of died off for me when I realized that the story mode was very lacking, and this game is UFC 2. Now UFC 2 for me, I, I have been a long time fan of the UFC uh, game series. I've been playing since probably um, UFC 1, I want to say. I didn't play a lot of it, but I did play a lot of UFC Undisputed 3. Loved it. One of my favorite fighting games of all time. The story mode was excellent. The fighting was excellent. You see the sweat on all the characters and stuff like that. It was a great game. Uh, and, then it, and last year, UFC came out, just EA UFC. And it was good. It was a decent game. The, the story mode was just okay. And then this year, the fighting is really, really good for me, personally. The fighting is very, very good for me, but the story mode is so lacking that I just couldn't find myself to really enjoy it that much, and the replay value for me wasn't too good. Um, I'm probably going to sell my copy to get Dark Souls 3, because of the whole 20% extra thing. But overall, I did enjoy myself in this game. Uh, I thought it was a, like a good one step forward and maybe a one and a half steps back. Uh, for the UFC series, I hope they do fix some things in the update in, excuse me, in future updates. But they, I doubt they will. It's EA. Come on, you're gonna have to pay for their updates to fix the game story mode. But if the game had a really good story mode, it would be amazing. I'd probably still be playing it to this day. But until then, uh, I don't think we're gonna have a good story mode in a UFC game for a while if EA is gonna be in control of it. Coming in at number four is gonna be MLB The Show 16. Or MLB 16 the show or however it is I don't pr own the game uh, I did play it at a buddy's house uh, and it was amazing it was the camera angles in this game blew me away they were some of the best camera angles I've seen in a sports game in a while I mean like I felt like I was actually watching a baseball game uh, from the stadium and the game was really fluid uh, I thought the animations was re were really good I thought uh, the models for the character or the players were really good this year um, I thought the game's balancing system was pretty good between all the teams. I mean, I played the Cubs against the Angels, and it seemed pretty even. Like, me and my friend are pretty even uh, at how good we are in the game, and it still seemed like a pretty even uh, game. And also, I think that Sony did a really good job on this game compared to last year. Uh, the only problem I really have with it is that you couldn't transfer your Diamond Dynasty team from last year over to this year. And that's the main reason why I'm probably not going to buy this game is because I spent like about a hundred dollars just on characters and players from last year's game in that game. And if I was able to transfer them over, I'd probably think this is the best sports game in recent memory because this is the only sports game I know where you can actually like spend money on stubs and use stubs to actually buy players rather than just like getting points and then you can use those points to buy packs, but you can't use the points to buy car like actual players like uh, all these EA games. But bravo to Sony, and I forgot what company helped to make this game, but it's one of my favorite, probably is my, the, the, the show franchise is probably the only sports exclusive game for PS4 that I can think of, but if there was another one, this one would probably be better, just saying. Coming in at number three for me is a very strange pick. Uh, I picked, I picked number three, uh, just because the updates for the game really did change it for me and made me enjoy the game a lot more. Uh, that game is Destiny. Uh, I'm not talking about the Taken King, I'm talking about just vanilla Destiny. Uh, they did change a lot of things that I particularly have noticed from the base version of the game without any DLCs. The loot, the loot jobs for me, by playing by myself, were actually a lot better. I've been getting a lot more blues lately. Uh, the, the skill trees are a lot better now, and even the ghosts, I like. I like Peter, Peter Dinklage. I think he was excellent in X-Men Days of Future Past, but he was not right for the character of Ghost, and I think the new actor that they have for him, for Ghost at least, is a very good uh, voice actor and really does fit the character of Ghost. Ghost has always reminded me of uh, Claptrap from Borderlands, which is like one of my favorite game series of all time. And Claptrap is like that game's icon, and I think Ghost in a lot of ways is Destiny's version of Claptrap. And uh, I think the new actor's voice kind of fits... Claptrap's voice a little bit. I think that's what they were going for with the character of Ghost, and I think that I think it works. I think Destiny did a really good job with that, and that honestly changed the game a lot for me. Like I even wanted to play the 
game right now. Uh, I do enjoy Destiny a lot more now than when I first got the game. But besides that, I think the new version of Destiny is worth playing. It's only 10 bucks right now if you get it from GameStop. And I think everyone who has not played Destiny should give it a try now. Coming in at number 2 is Fallout 4's DLC Automatron. Now this DLC uh, I had a lot of fun with for about 2 days <laughs> until I realized that uh, it was, there was only like 4 quests in it and a shitload of new uh, like robot customization options. If there even was robot customization options to start off with, which there wasn't. But I feel like this DLC for me is really good when it is combined with all the other new modes that are coming out for Fallout 4. Uh, whether it be survival mode or the new DLC coming out in like a week. I think that's called uh, Wasteland uh, Customization or something like that. Uh, it's the one that allows you to like really uh, make your settlements your own. I think that DLC mixed with uh, survival mode and Automatron will make the game much, much more pleasurable until the next DLC comes out. But I think Automatron on its own was a decent DLC. I think they could have lived in a little bit more with the quests. It was they came, it seemed kind of short to me. Uh, the robots do seem kind of clunky. I mean, uh, combat in Bethesda games has always been kind of clunky, but really uh, like chaotic at the same time. And I think this one's more clunky than chaotic a lot of times because I remember during the DLC a lot. Of, <laughs> I was getting shot by this one turret in the and the mechanist's lair that just would kill me within three shots and it was kind of bs for me but overall this dlc is a nice addition i think that bethesda did a decent job and compared to a lot of the other games that i played this month i had a lot of fun with automatron it was definitely worth the money that i put into it so number one for me personally was the division i think the division is probably the best Arguably the best uh, Tom Clancy game to come out since the original Splinter Cell. This game is fluid. It's quick. It has amazing cover. It has an amazing cover system. The loot system is really good. The customization of your character is really good. Uh, the customization of your weapons is really good. There's a crafting system. Uh, I think a lot of there's a different amount of AI for each or uh, per AI personality for each safe house that I thought was really cool. Uh, for a game of its stature. I thought what, or mission variety was decent, and that's really all I asked for, is just give me a decent mission variety. I understand that the game is a military shooter, and it's kind of hard to make a really good mission variety, especially in a game with a setting like this. But I think The Division is one of the best games that i played this year so far. I doubt it'll be anything compared to the new Ratchet & Clank and uh, Dark Souls 3 that come out in April. Those are definitely going to be a contender for my first and second place in the month of April when I'm recording this. But for March, The Division was great. This game was really, really good, and I enjoyed playing it. And I'm not even done with it yet, but I'm still having fun with it. So those are my top five games for the month of March, the year 2016. My name is Other and I want to thank you all for watching. Uh, this profile or channel, whatever you want to call it, would be nothing without my subscribers. And I want to thank each and every one of you. Uh, for supporting me and watching all these videos, liking, commenting, telling me I'm not a jackass on Instagram and even in the comment section. But again, I just want to say thank you to all of you for watching this. And I will see you all in the next video. Be smart, be AO. Have a good one, gamers.